Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. We've had a little break, as you know. You know. <laughs> We've had a... Uh, how much has it been at? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I've had nearly two week off and uh, it's done me well the good. I've had COVID. So, well, there's 15 videos to, to go out today, tomorrow, Sunday, five a day. So you're gonna, you're gonna have a porky feast or a porky overload, whatever you wanna call it. All right. Uh, so well, let's back up a little bit. Let's have a little look at what we've got going here. Brick top show. Thought it was shite. Uh, I like young Chamberlain. I think he's a good fighter. Uh, the rest of it, what we're on there. I mean, Nathan Gorman, fat as a pig, Mitchell man. What's what, what's all that about turning up in that in that kind of in that kind of shape? I don't I don't get that. Uh, where is he going to go in his career? Like turning up like that, he's got, not going to go anywhere. Give boxing a bad name. Uh, looking like that, it, it, it looks shocking, didn't it? He looked like Billy Bunter. Uh, I don't want to hear about all this. Oh, he's a nice guy. He's humble and all this crap. Look, fat as a pig, Michelin man. He's boxing a bad name. Get a grip of yourselves. He's not going to go anywhere that fat. So that's Nathan Gorman. Uh, the guy that he was fighting against were an old man as well. So I mean. Shocking. Willie Hutchinson in his 13th fight. The first 12 or never had winning records. So you got 12 and 0 and that's a padded record. Padded. You know what padded is, don't you? I've given people a bit of sticking past for having a padded record, but it's a typical Ingle fighter, isn't it, with a padded record. Padded. I've never seen that like it. They're talking about him like it's second coming of... Uh, Michael Moore at light heavyweight, padded CV, shocking. But he dealt with that guy who didn't have a have a, a padded record. He never had a losing. Re he, he he had a decent ish record, but his claim to fame when he got knocked out by Martinez, and that was it. So Willie Willie Hutchinson's thirteen and over. We're we're no we're no nearer to finding anything out about him. That's my opinion. Uh, so that's Willie Hutchinson. We've dealt with him. Who else is there? Liam Williams. He's in a British title defence, and he's one to sixty-six odds. So you've got to put sixty-six quid on to win a quid with Liam Williams. It lasted a round. Am I right? I said it go under three rounds, didn't I? Shocking. Shocking. Uh, Fair enough, you know, it we're, we're called by board, so like a mandatory, so there's not you could do about it, but just a knockover job, wasn't it, for Liam Williams, a knockover job. Liam Williams, in my opinion, is an on-top fighter. As soon as you put it on him, he don't want to know. We all saw what happened when he fought Beefy Smith, didn't we? As soon as he had it back, he didn't like it, did he? So we need to see Liam Williams tested. Uh I don't think it'll be against Andrade. I think, I think Andrade uh, is going to fight at 168. Now I've just seen something on social media. Somebody sent me saying it was. It's actually from Matchroom. We're dipping our toes with uh, into the 168 pound division. They're fighting a guy, aren't they? Uh, at 168 pound, but this guy's never fought at 168. He's a middleweight, so how are they dipping the toes at 168? They might be moving up to 168, but they're not fighting a 168 pound fighter. But I see Liam Williams fighting for vacant belt against somebody just ranked below him, somebody Frank Warren's probably bumping up the rankings with WBO. That's what I see happening there. So on the whole, the actual show was shite, utter shite, Frank. Utter, utter garbage. Which brings me to, if you want to talk garbage and we want to talk straight here, we want to talk boxing here, don't we, and talk straight. 
Let's talk about Frank's pay-per-view load of crap that he's, that he's doing as non-pay-per-view. This is how I look at it, right? They're doing that pay-per-view, aren't they, as non-pay-per-view, Dubois Joyce. It's not a pay-per-view fight anyway, but let's say it is pay-per-view, but they're now doing it as non-pay-per-view. Why would they be doing that? Why? Why? Because they're going to do a Tyson Fury pay-per-view shortly after, aren't they? And they're going to subsidise Dubois and Joyce off the Fury money. See where I'm coming from? So don't be fooled it wasn't a pay-per-view to start with now frank warren coming out saying we're doing it for the fans frank if you're doing it for the fans why would it down as a pay-per-view before the pandemic so you're full of shit frank i mean you've had a free run off me lately but you're full of shit all right it's never been a pay-per-view fight ever you know what i mean we write card yeah but come on in this day and age, maybe we could pass it as pay-per-view because it's that confusing. We can all flip and slip and slide, can't we, on opinions on pay-per-view, but this is how I look at it. They both had an handful of fights between them, aren't they? Or a couple of handfuls of fights between them. It's a great British title fight, but what is the criteria for pay-per-view? What? I don't get it, but it is what it is, isn't it? so it's non-pay-per-view and we're all supposed to say that's brilliant and it's for fans but like i said it went announced as pay-per-view months ago on it so don't make out that you're all for fans frank you're all for yourself you're just like every other boxing promoter in the uk prostitutes lot on yours all right you don't care for fans you care for your bank balances it's a business stop with this for fans rubbish frank because it's getting boring now. I'm not siding my head in on this, but you're starting to annoy me. All right? Annoying me. All right? So I think that's about it, really, as regards Frank's load of shite. Frank's lies. Jesus. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover pundits, shall we? Pundits. You've got David A, who's a whore. We all know he's a whore. I mean, he's been whoring Chisora out to MMA people, hasn't he? You know, he's looking for his plan B, isn't he? He, he just wants to get paid, doesn't he? So we've got David A there, who's a whore, and he works for BT Sport and Sky. You've got Paul Dempsey there, and David A, and they're going on about Dominic Ingle as this great nutrition guy, and how everybody keeps looking in great, fantastic condition now that they're with Dominic Ingle, Willie Hutchinson and Liam Williams, and this and that, look. Dominic Kingle, let me just point this out to you for those of you who don't know. Three of his fighters have failed dope tests. Three. Right? So if Willie Hutchinson or Liam Williams fail a dope test, nobody's saying they're doping. If they do, will Dominic Kingle land his licensing? That's what I want to know. Because they keep putting him down as this big nutrition expert. But when you've got fighters failing performance enhancing drugs, um, whatever behind the scenes for me anything that his fighters do from now on it has an asterisk next to it that's my opinion I'm entitled to it I'll tell Dominic King of that to his face because if he fails one more test or his fighters do I'll be on here saying that he should be getting gone get out of dodge all right people are getting punched in head nobody's saying a word are they all right so Thank you for liking and subscribing. Leave a comment, good or bad. Don't really care. Alright. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Don't have nightmares, Dominic.